Good morning, everybody. It's great to see all of you. Uh, Some haven't seen in a while. Welcome back from from Michigan. I'm glad you're back. My friend right there from Brazil, the last time he was here, I wasn't wasn't here, so I didn't have a chance to to meet you. So it's great to see you. Ms. Glass, good to see you again. Um, So it is great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. It's a beautiful day, and people still coming. Uh, So... Hope you had a chance to see our virtual VBS this week. Uh, My wife, Sydney Evelyn, did a wonderful job planning, executing every lesson, every day. I share with uh, Colonel Needham, we had kids from California. We had kids from Alabama, Georgia, uh, Port Charlotte, uh, and who knows? Um, there was a few that we just didn't, if, if they log in and they didn't put their name, they didn't, we didn't know who they are, where they are coming from. So uh, that was an excellent opportunity. And just like Colonel Needham said in our conversation, if we had a chance to bless somebody from California, amen to that. Uh, so that was a, a great experience. It's, you know, we having to find different ways to uh, reach out to people. And that was a wonderful, uh, wonderful week that we had. I hope you, as I say every Sunday, I hope you have an expectation this morning to see how God's going to speak with you, what's his spirit going to tell you this morning. And I hope you're able to see Jesus in his spirit on the songs and the prayers and the message, on the fellowship, um, because he's here. I have no doubt. Amen? We're going to sing two songs, and you're going to see a theme here. It's, one, it's all about building, because that was the theme of our Sunday school, uh, our VBS this week. So it will be build your kingdom here and build my life. Uh, you're welcome to stand if you want, or you, if you want to just praise sitting down, that is fine too. So this first song is Build Your Kingdom Here. It's a very uh, fast-paced song. So we're going to ask if our drums can count us in. And let's have a great time.
the darkness fear show your mighty hand heal our streets and land set your church on fire bring this nation back change the atmosphere build your And that's our prayer for um, Jesus to come heal our country, win our nation back. Um, there's always, thing, always things that we can improve. You know, one of the messages that we shared a few weeks ago, talk about this whole idea that if we get so caught up in this concept that, yeah, we're a Christian country, our founding fathers... And then we end up forgetting that our salvation will not be earned or we're not going to achieve that status if we don't work every day on it. So I think all of us, we have a responsibility um, to continue to bring healing to this nation. Um, we're very divided. Uh, I, uh, you know, there is this sense as you watch TV as you look at social media, we're very divided. And it's almost as uh, this idea that if you're not agreeing with somebody, then you are against. Um, and I think our prayer is that for, for Jesus to come, win our nation back, back bring healing, bring unity. Uh, because just like that, we're going to be able to see God's light on this earth.
say how good you are and that's our honest prayer father show us who you are there are times when we forget how powerful you are so there are thousands of students that are going to school back back to school tomorrow father and parents that are worried even students that are worried Show them how powerful you are. And Father, and just like the song said, help us to build our life upon your love. Not upon material things, status, relationships. But help us to build our life upon your love. That our life will be centered around you guides us father our nation needs you our nation needs healing father we pray for those that are also dealing with injustices in our country we pray for those that are suffering because of the color of their skin Pray for those minorities, Father, that at times don't feel the hem of voice. Father, help us that we as a nation, that we will find the ways to treat each other right. Help our government to seek for you, to find wisdom in you, in your word. Father, we pray for our current upcoming election father may you will be done and wherever they meet the winner father helps us as church to pray for our president helps us to be a light and not to be entangled in some of those issues that we see but 
to be a beacon of light, to be the difference, to be the institution that people can look and say, there is peace, there is love among you, church, Father. Father, be with us. Be with our Salvation Army. Because this, you started this mission. Father, we love you. We thank you. And we pray all this in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. So are you done singing and praising the Lord? <laughs> we are not yet done. Um, we have one of our songs that we normally sing, On Christ the, the Solid Rock I Stand. We see a theme all throughout today. So I'm going to um, ask to go ahead and go to our first verse. And we have accompaniment. Does anybody? Um, a Colonel, please. <laughs> I think the tune book number that we had right before. If you can go to the previous slide, there we go, 446. to verse 2 and verse 3, Colonel. Thank you for your beautiful accompaniment. solid rock. Good morning, church. For today's scripture reading, we'll be reading Philippians 1, 4 through 6. And every time I pray for you all, I pray with joy, because the way in which you have helped me in the work of the gospel from the very first day until now 
And so I am sure that God who began this good work in you will carry it on until it is finished on the day of Christ Jesus. Next, we will be reading uh, Matthew 7, 24 through 29. So then anyone who hears these words of mine and obeys them is like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain poured down, the rivers flooded over, and the wind blew hard against that house, but it did not fall because it was built on rock. But anyone who hears these words of mine and does not obey them is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain poured down, the rivers flooded over, the wind blew hard against that house, and it fell. And what a terrible fall that was. When Jesus finished saying these things, the crowd was amazed at the way he taught. He wasn't like the teachers of the law. Instead, he taught with authority. May God bless the reading of his word. Um, well, we've had the great pleasure of having my dad visit us. Every, come on, dad, you can come on down. Come on down, the price is right. Um, uh, well, you've, you've, had, you've met my mom and my dad before. Uh, my dad is a retired Salvation Army officer, but a, very active in all that we, he and my mom do. And so we've been very grateful that he has been with us this week, helping at VBS, helping yesterday fix our refrigerator at home, you know, everything that we can set his hands on. Well, one thing that you might not know about my, my dad um, and mom, when we came, when our family came to Atlanta, Georgia from Mexico, um, my mom, my dad was, did a major work in construction. And today, he's going to be sharing us his testimony about working in construction and how that was the beginnings of becoming a, 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 a preacher, an officer, with learning of what was in construction. So please welcome my dad, Major Gabriel Elias. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless everyone. Uh, let me tell you, that it's a joy for me to be here uh, sharing that uh, the power of God, that, uh, that, uh, that he can change everyone. He can change anyone in the, over the face of the world. And let me tell you, when I came to, to Atlanta, Georgia, it was in 1986. I think uh, I was working in construction, and I see a riot in the federal uh, penitentiary. I see a line of smoke there, say. And then uh, later on, I went to visit that place, and I saw, met some officers. But let me tell you, construction was uh, uh, really, uh, it was not my, my uh, main occupation. But I was working in, um, in South Padre Island, uh, doing foundations for uh, the uh, different motels, Sea Breeze, Sunshine, Plaza, and many, uh, for five years I was doing foundations there, helping people and learning to do it. So when I came to Atlanta, I was not, uh, I was not ready to work in construction. I was uh, ready to find another job. And then I, I, I discovered that it was not good for computers. It was a lot of work in computers. I said, oh my Lord, I don't work much in computers. So I put an advertisement in the, newspa in the newspaper doing uh, uh, concrete work, uh, sidewalks, uh, driveways, uh, any, anything about concrete. And then uh, I, life was good with me. And I started to work uh, with uh, an architect, with another company doing construction, uh, remodeling. I uh, was working for five uh, companies, and I have uh, a lot of workers with me. So I started to do uh, uh, commercial and residential homes in, in Atlanta, Georgia. For seven years, I was doing this. For, I was doing a subcontracting. The, the contractor get the money, but I got the job. <laughs> The contractor we made a lot of money. I was making, you know, say, but I was, I was, uh, yeah, I was busy, and I learned a lot about construction. And the most important thing for learning is uh, the architects make the the blueprints. They do everything, the planning, everything about homes, the planning, everything about small or big buildings, small foundations, bigger foundations, strong foundations. 
and then I learned a lot about, uh, uh, especially in, in, in Georgia, because Georgia is not like a Texas. In Texas, everything is flat. <laughs> but in Georgia, we had to do retaining walls and, and uh, special work for, for, for do construction, for do the homes there. I learned to do the building, uh, break the, uh, break the, uh, the, uh, the rock. Sometimes I had to break the rock, for example, I did two homes in Blue Ridge. Blue Ridge, the city in Medellin North, Moro, everywhere in, in, in Atlanta, around Atlanta, Georgia. And I got joy to doing this. And I, I learned more and more about construction. But one day, I, I was attending church. Uh, but one day, I say to the Lord, Lord, I was doing my knees on the floor, finishing the concrete working with the trial machines, and do it here and there, but I, I'm not spending much time kneeling in, the, in church, praising you, or worship you, or, or praying for you, for, praying for me to you. And then uh, one day, uh, one of my, one of my uh, friends from Costa Rica, she said to me, Gabriel, uh, they're gonna be uh, a new Hispanic church in Atlanta, Georgia. Is, uh, and they need somebody who play the guitar. So I went there, uh, we, I, I got my brother, he, my brother was playing the bass, my, my nephew, he was playing the drums, and my wife was singing, and uh, Idali Montiel was singing too, and um, uh, her father was playing the violin. So we went to assist uh, and, and, and help the people there with the, with the music. He was a captain there, a uh, captain, uh, this was happening February the 14th, 1993. Captain Willis Howell was the officer in charge of Atlanta, Tem Atlanta Temple Corps. And then uh, I saw the, he was in the conference, conference ter um, territorial conference room. He said, wow, what is this? What kind of church is this? But I saw many people in, in, in uniforms and most of the people were all people, and I say, how these old people can shoot a rival? What kind of rival these people can shoot? And then, because I never hear nothing about the Salvation Army, even I saw the people ringing the bells on the store, say, what these people is doing? You know, but I see those uh, people there in the, in the first uh, meeting for the Hispanic, and then uh, it was Mayor Gloria Reagan, who invite us to be part of the Salvation Army. And I say, well, let's start it. And then we start the Spanish ministry for the Salvation Army in, in the cafeteria. Maybe you don't remember, but we was a small cafeteria. Somebody remember where it was a small cafeteria there? Not the right now. It was really small, maybe the size of this stage over here. And then we took the tables out and we start with the Hispanic ministry right there in the cafeteria. And then uh, Gloria Reagan says to me, Gabriel, I know you're working in construction. I know you do foundations, but we invite you to be part of this, to do the foundations for the people who believe in Jesus. This is the best foundation all over the world. I say, wow. So I have to quit my job. I had to quit my job and say, well, I, I say, I decided, my wife and I decided, well, we decided to serve the Lord. I don't know how to preach. And then they, they bought for us a, 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 a the, um, bookstore that wasn't close to the uh, um, burger, burgers closed there. And the entrance, now is the entrance. They bought it for us. And we remodeling that place, and we start the, the Salvation Army Hispanic ministry there. And it uh, was really beautiful for us. And then my first sermon was for one hour. My first time that I preached was for one hour. And let me tell you, I started in Genesis, and I finished in Revelation. <laughs> so, that's the way we started. But I was eager to preach. I was eager to say, I need to know the Lord Jesus. 
We need to love the Lord Jesus. And then they send us to Asbury Theological Seminary for, for, for learning to preach. Seminars and preaching. For seminars here, seminars there. And every year we were learning how the salvation, what, what is the salvation army? Because I never knew nothing. See, I, I thought it was only preaching. Gabriel, let's go do the bell ringers. What is that? Let's do uh, uh, visiting the, the uh, nursing homes. What is that? Let's go do the uh, um, uh, helping people in disaster. Wow, there is a lot of things to do in the Salvation Army. But that's, that's the basic that God is helping us for building the church of God, for building his church. And then, you know, we have three months later, we have 80, 80 people in the Hispanic. Then they asked us to go to Marietta, Georgia. In three years, we, we have packed the church because the Lord was doing this job. Then they sent us to Gainesville, Georgia. And there was, was only 15, 15 persons there, and God started to work with us, helping to build the foundation for the people who learn and accept the Lord. And then it was packed in the in, in Gainesville. They then sent us to Texas. The same thing happened in San Antonio. The same thing happened in, in Dallas. And then, goodbye, Gabriel. <laughs> but let me tell you, our passion is to reach people. Our passion, and must be, never end that passion to reaching the people for Jesus Christ. Because Jesus came to save us. And we need to continue this work in construction, constructing for the Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, and God bless everyone. Wow, from, um, from kneeling, putting down the foundation, to kneeling, putting down foundation in our and people's lives, right? From God doing that. What an incredible, thank you. Dad, for giving us that testimony. Um, I always love to hear it. Well, we've heard our Bible verses. Thank you, Roger, for reading that today. Um, uh, we've heard our Bible verses for the last lesson that we had in our first ever Port Charlotte virtual VBS this week. Um, we are living in some different times. This was a very unique experience. I'm very thankful, like my husband said to Evelyn and Sydney, um, for your work and those that were called on from the church to help um, with prayers and being part of those lessons. Thank you for that. But we're going to continue in that lesson and the story about the wise man building his house on the rock, like you heard in our scripture passage. And we're going to sing again another little song, another little chorus that we would sing in Sunday school. And I took off my mask because I felt like I couldn't breathe. So we're going to sing a little song that I'm sure that you know. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rains came tumbling down. If you know what's singing. The rains came down and the floods went up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods went up. And the house on the rock stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains came down down the rains came down and the floods went up the rains came down and the floods went up the rains came down and the floods came up and the house on the sand went smash or what did you learn whoosh whoosh the next part so build your house on the lord jesus christ 
So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessings will come up. There's even one. Oh, the blessings come down and your prayers go up. Or the blessings come down and the prayers go up. Or the blessings come down as your prayers go up. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. So today we can count we had worship service and Sunday school class just with that little song. A lot of little truths for us to learn, a lot of little truths for us to normally teach children with that. Um, though at the time Jesus was teaching, you know, this is Jesus was on the mountainside telling that story. It's the Sermon on the Mount that we all, that we know um, and today, he, t he still is teaching us those same lessons, that simple objects of this story, through those little objects in that story, Jesus tells us how to live as the members of the kingdom of God. So let's get into that story. Um, and I want to, as we go through it, I want us to think about the different objects that are presented. And I think uh, Evelyn is going to help us out with some of that too. So we have there in Matthew 7, 24 to 29, therefore everyone who hears these words, and I think she's going to have a slide for us. There we go. For anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them up into practice is like a wise man. So we have Jesus' words and wise man who built his house on the rock. We have all those images there. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. So we have the rains, floods, winds, all of those scary things that we're scare, scared about here in Florida, right? Yet it did not fall because its foundation was on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. So we have all those objects or people in that story. We have Jesus' words, that is Jesus speaking, right, teaching. His house, the house, Jesus' words in action. His, the rock, right, faith in action, the Holy Spirit in action. The sand, the world culture, the priorities, what you see on TV, what you see on social media for sure, um, uh, uh, what you see on the news, education, popularity, anger, self, it's just all the culture, as all what's around us is that sand. The rain, the waters, um, which we know are the hardships of life, attacks and challenges of our faith as well. Then we have the two people in the story, the wise man, and I put, don't get it, it's not, I thought, what can I put so we can remember? Oh, the wise men, <laughs> um, for us to remember, the wise man, and uh, the foolish man. The wise man heard Jesus' words, allowed the Holy Spirit to come in and act on what Jesus said. The foolish man um, just hears Jesus' words, and does not live by them. So I thought about this, and I thought from the very beginning, so what are Jesus' words? He repeats it over again. He says it, you know, therefore everyone who hears these words of mine. Who is the mine? We all know. Who is the mine? The words of mine. Who is that referring to? Who is speaking? Jesus, right? They're Jesus' words. These words of mine. And what are Jesus' words? You know, I like to look into scripture and really get to know what it's referring to, what it's going, what it's going um, back to. And if you have your Bible out, get it back out. If you have, if you have your phone, get your phone out. And we're going to look at the, what Jesus' words were, what he was referring to. So go to Matthew chapter 5. Our main story is in Matthew chapter 7, and we're going to go a couple chapters behind. Matthew chapter 5. What are these words of mine that Jesus is talking about? What are these words of mine that Jesus is talking about? Well, you'll see in the beginning of chapter 5, all the way to chapter 7, it is the Sermon 
on the mount, right? Most of us know uh, or heard of Matthew 5 with all the Beatitudes that are there. He goes to the mountainside to teach his people. We know from different stories that there were probably thousands of people on that mountainside next to um, the, uh, in Capernaum next to the Sea of Galilee. Jesus focused on the kingdom of God, right? He was trying to teach the people there about the kingdom of God. As the, as the Jews would sit and listen, they thought questions such as, how can I enter this kingdom of God Jesus is talking about? Am I righteous enough to enter the kingdom of God? Have I followed enough rules that I've been given to, to enter the kingdom of God? And the sermon shows, the Sermon on the Mount shows that how a person who is in a right relationship with God, how they should conduct their life. So we really think about that story of the wise man and the foolish man, but we have to go all the way back to remember what Jesus' words were, what he was talking about in these last chapters. So we're going to quickly go through it. You might have to flip through your Bible quickly or scroll through those chapters and pay attention to the titles that it has on your sections, if your Bible has little titles that are in, your, in those sections. Are you ready to go quickly with me? <laughs> um, we begin in chapter 5, right? It's verses 1 through 12, and they're the Beatitudes, the blessings. You'll know some of those. You are the salt, and, the salt of the earth and the light of the world is a popular verse. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. We go on to verses 17 through 20. Jesus fulfilling the law. Jesus not going against the law, but fulfilling the law. We go on, 21 to 26. Murder is comparable to anger and sinning against one another. That was a new idea for the Jews, that murder was comparable to anger. We go on, verses 27 to 30. Adultery and lusting, and how lusting was, uh, adultery and was also lusting. Lusting was comparable to greed. Then we go on chapter uh, di divorce in verses 31 and 32. Except for an affair, right? That's what they said. Um, Adam Clark's commentary says, a real Christian ought to rather to beg of God the grace and bear patiently and quietly the imperfections of their spouse. Now, he said wife, but I put spouse, right? Because we know we, 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 we work together. Then to think of means of being parted from them. Um, and due to that thought in the day, divorce was easily done by they, a husband could divorce their wife for any trivial reason. Um, so Jesus was telling them something different, a different way of living. We go on, verses 33 to 37, about making promises and, vo and vows. Then verses 38 to 42, revenge and an eye for an eye. What Jesus, how Jesus changes that idea. Remember, you might have heard, you have heard that it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to the, other, to the other cheek as well. What a different way of looking at forgiveness and uh, revenge. We continue loving your enemies and praying for those who persecute you. Verses 43 to 48. Uh, then chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, giving humbly to the needy. Verses 5 through 15, are the praying humbly and the Lord's prayer. Then we go on to verses 19 to 24, storing treasures in heaven and not on earth. We know do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, but store up also for yourself treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You cannot serve both God and money, um, at verses 19 to 24. We go on, don't worry, right? Don't worry is our next one. 
um, verses 25 to 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough troubles on its own. We know that, right? So don't worry. Be happy almost. Okay. Then we go into chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, about judging others. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. And if you're following along, verses 7 through 12, ask, seek, and knock. And it ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. Right? And then we get to Matthew 7, uh, verse 12. The golden rule. Right? The golden rule. So in everything, do to others what you would have, done, have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Verses 13 and 14, narrow and wide gates. We go on, verses 15 through 23, false prophets and false disciples. And then we get to our story today, verses 24 to 27, building on a solid foundation. You know, those are, those are all different sermons that could be done one lesson for each single one of those, right? Right? of how to live in the kingdom of God, and we're studying all that. And it can be summed, all those chapters can be summed up in this. It's the standard for love and selflessness that Jesus himself would embody when he died on the cross for our lives, right? It's the standard for love and for selflessness. He teaches them to live in a noticeable way, different than the other people. So those are all Jesus's words, right? So when we think of Jesus's words, my words, we go back to those chapters and think about the kingdom of God and kind of like our code of conduct because of our love for Jesus and our love for others. So Jesus compares the listener of his words in two ways, the wise man and the foolish man building a house. We remember those verses, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, and we just read what those are, and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on, solid, on, on sand. One who hears Jesus' words, they are a builder. Right? They have the materials to build a house. The message of Jesus is the house, right? The boundaries for how we are to uh, set our life, our house, where we live and how we, how we act, how we, how we are. So if we go back to that slide, Evelyn, where it has the different section. Yep, thank you. Right? So we have the foolish man and we have um, the, the wise man and the words that are the words in the house, right? Then we go on to the rock. Now, this is not the rock, the wrestler. He is not Maui from Moana, right? The rock here is the strong foundation. The man who hears Jesus and acts on what Jesus says builds the house on the solid rock. So it's not just having a house, Jesus' words. It's also building his, your life on the solid rock and your actions of doing what Jesus says, um, actions of doing what Jesus says. The solid foundation, that rock, is the practice, is the doing. It is the action of the Holy Spirit working in us, making that solid foundation. It is working and making solid habits, right, that make a foundation. The rock is faith in action. So now we have a house with, with, which is Jesus' words on a solid foundation, listening and obeying Jesus. So we have the Jesus' words, the rock. And the storms. And we all can say, oh, yes, Captain Claudia, I can tell you about those storms, right? I can tell you about your storms. 
Um, and you can easily guess it's the hardships of life. The foolish, the foolish man and the wise man both had storms. What does that tell us? We're all going to get those storms, right? Expect those storms. We in Florida know how to prepare for the storms, right? Because we all will have those storms. The wise builders and the Arctic, wise builders and architects, when my dad talked about those plans, um, they prepare for storms. If they're wise builders, they prepare for storms and how they build, right? Uh, I think my dad, he was reminding me that he worked with an architect that was lived in our neighborhood. He, when we went to his house, he had a tree in his home, like from the ground with the roots. <laughs> he had a tree in his, home, in, his, in his home. He had to prepare for that. He had to build that, just as we prepare for the storms. You know, those storms could be financial troubles. They could be heartbreak. They could be sickness, cancer, death, being bullied, rejection, bad grade at school, marriage and relationship troubles, hardships. You know the storms that you've passed through. You know the storms that have made your rocks solid, that have built your home and have made, know that your home is solid. So then we go on to the next thing, the sand, the sand. Um, living here close to the beach, have you, have you ever Googled how to build a house on the beach? You, have y'all ever Googled that, you know? <laughs> Actually, this is a popular thing, and I found a lot of sites here in Port Charlotte, from Port Charlotte, that tell you how to build a house on sand. Um, and uh, it... Is, and I thought, is it possible to build your house on sand? And the answer is yes, but listen to this. According to Google and those sites that I found, the secret is that the builders construct homes on concrete piers, right? They dig in deep into the sand until they hit that solid earth, the bedrock. So they, so they make those uh, piers to, to make sure they reach that solid part to be able to withstand, to put, stand the house. And I'm sure nowadays that sand is mixed along with other solid materials to make it stable. But if you have gone to the beach, you know, and hopefully everybody here has gone and taken advantage of this area, you know that the sand moves. It changes, it can be lifted, it can be taken back and forth by the waters. And what was Jesus saying about the sand? It was building your house on the sand was like not putting into practice what you have heard about Jesus. You know the Bible, but you don't do it, right? You know the Bible, but you don't do it. That is the foolish man, right? That is the foolish man who is not putting Jesus' words into action. Once the house is built on the sand, the storms come, and without that solid foundation, the house will be washed away. If you have Christ as your Savior, Jesus' words are to be put into practice. Without practicing that holy living led by the Holy Spirit, you will continue to be wiped out, right, when those storms come. You will just live barely hanging on. You know, the parts of your home, remember those are Jesus' words, will be forgotten once those storms come. His teachings will be tossed by the wind. You will, you will have doubts whether his teachings were even true or good in your life. And why is all those doubts? Because they have not been put into practice, right? They have not been put into practice. The Holy Spirit hasn't led that new creature into action of doing and listening and obeying what Christ has told you. But what has become more important? What the world's culture has told you. What your priorities might be other than Jesus. Maybe it might be making lots of money. Maybe it might be your education. Maybe it might be trends, popularity, sexual immorality, 
lust, anger, self, politics, ever-changing, um, our ever-changing culture. All of those are that drifting sand, right? There is even quicksand. It will overtake you. Putting your life on moving ground, right, will overwhelm and overtake you. But we have the wise man. We are saved and we believe in Jesus that he's the savior from our sins. And because of that faith, we, believe, we begin to, to do and live by what he says. That is the wise man. We act and the Holy Spirit's act and the sand under our feet begins to turn into cement. Right? And then again, God acts, we act, and the sand under our feet begin to turn into cement, a solid foundation. I do want to be careful, though, in what you do not hear, right? Our salvation is based on our belief and repentance and forgiveness in Christ. A new life is created when the Holy Spirit comes and makes things new. But this, but this is not, though... I will do my part, then God will do his part. Let's, I, let's make sure we know. It is not I will do my part, God will do his part. It is not meeting Jesus halfway in order to have solid ground. Our actions will not be perfect, so we depend on the Holy Spirit. It is not earning salvation. It is not by works, but by our faith in Christ. Um, it is not an earning an entrance into the kingdom of God. The Sermon on the Mount describes the character, how we flow, right? Building that new character, allowing that Holy Spirit to remind us of God's words and his actions. Um, not the, it's not the requirement to become into, um, it's not the requirement of become, coming into the kingdom of God, right? That is the salvation of Jesus Christ. That is our belief in him. You know, when I was a child, I, um, I loved Jesus and Christ was in my life as a child. I rededicated my life as a young adult later on in life. And God's word was in my heart and mind um, from what I had learned years before. But there was a time in my life when I was more interested in reading history books, in academics, in um, watching movies maybe, than reading Jesus' words and being in his, in his presence. You know, though I tried living and serving Jesus, because I remember that, I tried living and serving Jesus from what I remember from Bible teachings, but though we know that it is not through works, right? It is through faith in Jesus. When the storms came, I imagined my life was standing on top of that solid ground, but there was no house. There was no house. Jesus' teachings were not there around me. Um, and what good does that do, standing on solid ground and not being in a shelter? When the storms came, I would be wiped off that solid foundation. I was encouraged to pray to God to give me a desire to read his Bible even more, to put it deeply in my heart. So I was encouraged to even pray and ask God for that and he delivered. He made that passion inside of me um, to discover the beauty and life of reading God's word as crucial as having shelter in place. To protect me, to protect ourselves from the storm, from the blistering sun, from the cold, to get rest, we have to have shelter, which is Jesus' words in our life. And our shelter must be combined with a solid foundation. Jesus is our shelter. He is our solid foundation. If there are cracks that might be in your life that need to be rededicated to God, I ask you to consider that today. I ask you if there are any parts in your home that are sand and need to be turned into concrete. We know that the Holy Spirit creates new things, and we ask the Lord to help us do that today. 
Well, the end of our sermon, I know we're a little longer today, but the end of our sermon is going to be a little different, and I'm going to need some help for the end of our sermon. Can I get two volunteers and my husband who's going to help? You might have to zoom in, Evelyn. Can I get two volunteers? Oh, yay, Roger. And I need one more. Can I get two The wise builder, Roger. The wise builder putting his house on. <laughs> the wise builder building his house on the rock. So go ahead and stand your house on the rock. We're going to stand it up like this so everybody can see the beautiful home that you have. There we go. Thank you, Roger. Now we have, I'm sorry, Dad. I didn't know you were going to be our volunteer. So we're going to have your house built on the sand. Okay, your house built on all the sand. All right, so let's build your house on the sand. Let's go ahead and put your house on the sand. No, no, it's okay. No, no, no. No, no, no. I'll give us that Build it up straight. There we go. We have our two. My dad used to, we wanted to be an architect, right? Before he was a lawyer, he wanted to be an architect. Okay? So then we have some storms brewing for Captain Claudia's bags of wonder. We have some storms brewing. These are my pickle jars. Okay? Now I want you to hold it, Roger. Yes, there we go. Almost like, okay, there we go. You're holding your wise man, holding his house on the rock. Well, Okay, what happens when we have and we put God's word into practice, the homes? You're not going to get it. We're just going to get the home. <laughs> what happens when the, the wise builder builds his home, Jesus' words, on solid ground, which is faith and action? What happens when the storms come? Juliana, you can tell me what happens when the storms come. Is the house standing still? <laughs> what do we see? Is the house standing? Yes, right? The house stood on the solid rock and it stood still. Then we have, I'm sorry again, Dad. We have our foolish builder. No, 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 no. no, no. He's sinking. <laughs> well, we're going to see something different. So we have the house, which is Jesus' words in our life, but the sand. We're not putting Jesus' words in action. We're not living the way God wants us to live. And so, when the storms come, what do you think is going to happen? The Bible says it's going to get washed away. Let's see. Where is that house now? It is gone. It is washed away. Right? Let's go into prayer to God today. God, we thank you because you are our solid rock. We thank you because you're, you loved us so much. You gave us your word and your teaching. You gave us a, self, a safe place in you. We thank you, God, because you chose us and you invite us into your home. And you want, us to be, you want to be in our home, and we thank you for that, God. 
we thank you for your solid rock. God, and um, we pray because we know in our hearts hurt for friends and family and unknowns in our world that is just sinking, God. It's sinking and is being washed away. We're seeing loved ones who know God's word and are not putting into practice, and we just cry and our hearts break because they are being washed away. Lord, we pray for our nation, and we pray for the Christian church universally. Let us be strong on your word, God. If, you, if there are faults within us, if there are cracks in our foundation, if there are cracks in our relationship with you, God, we ask your Holy Spirit to come in. We seek repentance, God, that we try to do things as the sand, build things on the sand our way, the way that the world says. But, oh, God, we need your rock, and we need your salvation, and we need your presence and your Holy Spirit. God, we need your force. We pray for those loved ones, our families, friends, even those that have disappointed us. Lord, we pray for them, for you not to let them be wiped away, washed away. We pray for you to uh, pour, uh, reach out your arm just like you did with Peter. God, save them. God, save us. Keep us inside the shelter of your word and your Holy Spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're ready to sing. We're going to sing in celebration today as we finish church. Let the 
saturate our hearts, mind, and soul. And Father God, may your teaching be instilled in our hearts that we could treat each other fairly and that we can see you clearly. Father God, help us that we stand on solid ground and not on sinking sand. Lord, may our hearts rejoice always over everything that is um, not good and may you be exalted Lord in all things that are good and pleasing to you father help us walk with us and continue teaching us help us Lord to stand strong on that solid ground Lord we love you we praise you and we celebrate you in all things and all God's people say amen Build your kingdom here, let the darkness fear, show your mighty hand, heal our streets and land, set your church on fire, win this nation's back, change the atmosphere, build your kingdom. Have a great week. God bless you. You want? Thank you, Roger. Thank you.